Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shah Weekly. And in this video, I just want to show you one of the articles that I just published and I spent a, quite a long time writing this article. Uh, and you may have already noticed that I have been uh, moving away from MVVM pattern and going towards more of a more simpler approach for at least for client server-based applications. So this article uh, is going to explain all of that stuff. I have written some other articles, as, as you can see over here, this one, Surf Architecture, you can definitely check that one out. But this one, the Building Large Scale Application, the Surf UI Guide to Modular Architecture, goes into more details about how to work on much larger applications. Uh, so, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these articles. I mean, some of the contents of the article. All right. So understanding the MV pattern, uh, if you not already know, you can read about that section. And I already uh, covered that in the Swift UI architecture article. So you can definitely check that one out. And what this article is basically going through is in a client server application, we can create a single source of truth for, for our applications that are small or medium size. So over here you can see that we have, which I like to call aggregate model, but you can just call it model, I guess. And that is going to act as a network layer and it's going to give you the entities. So instead of ending up with like 30 or 40 different view models, and most of those view models usually end up with like one function, right? I mean, fetch products, something like that, or do something. Um, instead of that, if we look at it and if we create just a single model for small or medium size application, for large application, I'm going to cover it later, and that particular store model will be able to provide whatever your view or views need. So in a small medium app, you just need one kind of a model and you don't really need any view models. You just create these models. It will give you the entities and you're done. Now, if you're working in a uh, location manager kind of application maps application, then just create a different observable object. That will be like a wrapper on top of location manager. So you can definitely do that. It's not like you're restricted. So the main idea of this article and the main idea of MV pattern is not to create unnecessary things that, that are not needed. Because remember that the code that you have uh, is not an asset, it's a liability. So the less code is much better, okay? And usually I end up injecting the, the model that I created into the environment, but you don't have to. You can pass it like a state object, that's perfectly fine. But usually I do end up injecting into the uh, environment object. Then I can access that environment object and I can perform any function that I want, like adding, populating, getting all the stuff. So for a small medium app, for client server app, one model will be more than enough, probably for most of the cases, but if you're working on larger applications, that one model can become very big, right? If you're talking about this one, you can have just one model, one aggregate model for the whole app, which is so big. We have so many different things going on in e-commerce applications. So how do we tackle that? So multiple aggregate models, you simply go ahead and divide it into multiple models based on the behavior that they're providing. So let's say that you're working in a e-commerce application, then you can have a model for catalog, you can have a model for customer management, you can have ordering, and that is, that's what they will provide. The catalog aggregate model will give you things related to the catalog, like product, category, brand, review. Ordering aggregate model is going to give you something for order, order line, order status, shipping method, so much. Maybe shipping is huge, so maybe shipping can also become its own aggregate model. And this is how it will look like. So a catalog aggregate model, it's going to take a HTTP store client, or you can create your own different catalog client if it's so different, and it will have all the functions to work on the catalog. And the inventory will have different ones, and then you can, or ordering will have different ones and then you can inject it as an environment object or state object, you can use that state object also. And then finally, you can start using it in your catalog list screens, okay? Sometimes you will have models like admin dashboard screen that will be like, hey, I want some information from the catalog, but I also want some information from ordering. Well, in those cases, just use multiple environment objects and now you can get from the catalog or you can get from the, mo from the ordering, all right? But there might be some other screen apart from admin dashboard that may require uh, 
things from different models. So you can do that. Just like the modeling that we can separate, you can also separate the UI. And this is how the architecture will actually looks like in a much larger app. You can see that the catalog UI over here is just going to contain all the stuff related to the catalog. And these are not really packages. These are folders. I mean, you can have them as packages. That is perfectly fine, as I'm saying over here, that you can have them as packages also. This can be a package dependency. So all of these aggregate models, depending on how large your app is, it's going to talk to the my, my store kit. So this is all the data services stuff going on. And you can also have like a shared section. This will be like views or your reusable controls that are just used everywhere. So shared resources, images, all that stuff, okay? What about the view specific logic? So I also go into, so that was more of a domain specific logic uh, that you're downloading from the actual web service, but your views can also have specific logic, right? Like maybe your views can filter validation for the form. So you can go ahead and if you want, this is one approach that where you can just write the filter function for that particular content view or that particular uh, view itself. So right inside the view, that's perfectly fine. Now, if you want to reuse that functionality in other views, then this approach might not be a good idea. You want to separate it out. You can even put it inside the aggregate model if it directly related to that, or you can factor it out. So I think over here, you can just extract out the functionality, write unit tests for it, okay? And if you want, you can also write end-to-end uh, -end tests for it. So I go through all of these different things. Uh, it's a long article, as you can see. So definitely check that one out. And if you have any question, you can definitely ask, ask the questions in the comments. I would love to hear it. I've spent a lot of time writing it, so hopefully you will enjoy it. I also cover a little bit of navigation, that in these big apps, how you can perform navigations. So that is also going to be useful. Uh, testing, I have a different section on testing that goes through that testing the behavior and not the implementation details. So making sure you do that, end-to-end -end testing and all those kind of testing, okay? So hopefully you will enjoy this article. Uh, thank you so much and uh, yeah, go enjoy and share. Thank you so much.